Hi, welcome to Applications of Deep Neural Networks with Washington University. Welcome to the fall 2022 semester. I can't believe we are in the concluding semester for 2022 already, but let's get right into this. So whether you're taking this from Washington University or if you are just following along with these videos on the internet, you're going to want to go to my GitHub repository, T81 558 Deep Learning. I have a link to it in the description. And if you're in Washington University, it's going to be all through WashU Canvas. I will post our weekly meetings to, to that location. However, if you're doing this through, through the internet, you can follow along with everything. All of the assignments are listed. You just won't get anything graded, obviously, or have the uh, interaction with, with fellow classmates. So let's get right to it. This course is divided into modules. Each module corresponds to approximately a week. This is the first module, and when you click on one of these, what you're going to see is several parts. Usually there's five parts in a module, and each of those is a separate video. I try to keep the videos around 10 minutes in length, because let's be realistic, who watches any longer than a 10 minute video. So each of these parts, you have a link to the video. So you could just jump right to that. And this would take you actually to the video for last semester. And because obviously I haven't posted this one yet. And the notebook. So here's the notebook that we're at. Everything is in Jupyter Notebooks. All of the course material is in Jupyter Notebooks. It lets me mix text and images and that kind of thing quite well. If you want an actual text course book, you can download the PDF to this entire thing. I rendered it as close as I could to a book format. It's a 500 page plus page book. You can also get that on Amazon if you want the printed version of it. It's It's got really all of of the material and all of the, the code and output. I try to limit output just so that it's not like a dump of the notebooks, but it's it does really have everything there and it is formatted, it's rendered with LaTeX, it is pretty much in book format. It's still a work in progress, but you can also get a Kindle version of it if you feel like reading it in Kindle. I did use the new equation formatting that's available in Kindles, so it, it looks pretty good, I, I think anyway. So all of these notebooks, you can open them in Google Colab, and I do recommend that you make use of Google Colab for this course. There's several paid versions of it, but you really don't need a paid version of Colab. So long as you have a Google account, a Google Drive account, and the free version of Colab, you can run everything you need and you can run it with a GPU, and that's the important part because deep learning without a GPU is just going to be quite, quite slow. Now, if you do want to install it on your own computer, I have other videos here describing exactly how you would go about doing that. If you have one of the new M1 Macs, you can make use of the built-in GPU type capability. If you have an Intel Mac, I honestly don't even own an Intel Mac anymore, so I, I don't know how much longer I will support that, but you could run it, but without a GPU. So I'd say about 80% of this course would work on a Intel Mac. So if you just click on the Colab link, it'll launch it in Colab. Now we're in Colab. You can see I have Pro Plus. I do make sure that everything works in the free version though. Normally you would copy it to a drive, that would copy it to, to your G drive. And then you can now run stuff right into here. Jupyter is going to be the primary IDE editor that we use for this course. So just an overview of what we're going to cover. It's deep learning, which was sort of a renaissance in neural networks, led by these four guys who are pretty much the, the luminaries of deep neural network. There's Jan LeKern, Jeffrey Henton, Yasuo Bengio, and Andrew Ning. The first three of these guys actually won the Turing Award, which is, I don't know, kind of like computer science's Nobel Award. I think they could only give it to three people. I don't know why Andrew was not, not included. I really like Andrew. I've learned so much from his courses that he has put out on Coursera. Highly recommend Coursera. So what is deep learning? What is machine learning really in general? In the good old days, like when I got into IT many, many years ago, you would put in input data, you'd put in program code, it would go into the computer and you'd produce the output. So you wrote your programs, you got your data, and you processed it. That led to tremendous automation, that computers could do things that humans previously did by hand. 
Now you get the input data, the expected output for some of your data, at, at least as much of your data as you can label with output data, and it's practical, feed it into the computer and it outputs the program code. The program code is essentially the trained neural network. It's not like it's writing Python code for you. A deep learning is a tremendous buzzword. There's, there's tons of applications that are sometimes thrown at deep learning that maybe shouldn't be. There's six areas that I get down to that really deep learning is particularly adept at. Computer vision, looking at things, looking at video, looking at still images. It can be used in tabular data, but this is the area where it you, you might be better off with XGBoost or gradient boosting, random forest, those kind of things. Tabular data is just a bunch of rows and columns, and you pick one column that you're going to try to predict if you're doing supervised, and you go for that. We're gonna start with tabular data because it's the foundation. You wanna see how to run that sort of data into your neural network. Natural language processing, neural networks have been doing some crazy things here with the transformers where it can learn to translate a language just very quickly. I think like Ford, uh, I've, I've trained it between English and Spanish, I think in under an hour on a GPU and it's it does amazing uh, well on translating the language. Reinforcement learning. This is where it learns a series of steps to an ever-changing environment. Often this is applied to video games, but any any sort of process can be had reinforcement learning thrown at it. Time series is where things are changing over time. Audio is actually time series as well because it's a, a sonic wave sort of thing that you're analyzing. Generative neural networks. GANs are the most famous of these, and GANs are something that we will get into in this course. They're the neural networks that generate these very, very realistic looking faces or other things. Just throw out a bunch of images, train it, and it'll learn to generate its own new images in that vein. Normally, when you jump right into classical machine learning, you will see regression and classification. Regression is where the neural network is predicting some sort of a number. Classification is where it's predicting what class something belongs into, and there's some overlap to that. Sometimes you'll use regression to predict a number that is used to tell you what class something's in. In neural networks, it goes well beyond that. The neural network can be doing both regression and classification simultaneously. You can have two answers come out. You can have an image go in and an image go out. Maybe that's extreme multi-regression, but it's it's something entirely different that we haven't really seen before the days of deep neural networks. And then why deep deep learning? Like I said, those those things related to problems related to computer vision and some of the other domains that deep learning is really dominating now are the reason that you would go into deep learning. And why Python? Python is just the language of the higher level applied machine learning and even, even deeper. But if you're going down to the, I don't know, the linear algebra first principles of these things, you're probably dealing in C, C, C++ or Fortran. But to make use of it and even to define your own models, most research is done currently in Python. The two major players in this right now anyway, Although there's, there's, there's a few more, but TensorFlow, Keras, and PyTorch. And Google is the makers of TensorFlow, Keras, and a relatively new one from Google that I think is being made to somewhat take the research crowd uh, as PyTorch has is Google Jax, which is, is another quite, quite new one. PyTorch, which is Facebook's entry, is very, very popular in the research community. And I am actually creating a course, a parallel course to this one, not done yet, that is basically this course just in PyTorch. If you're interested in that one, uh, I have I have a link to it in the description and you can follow it as, as it goes. I would say the main difference between the two is you end up with a lot more code, not necessarily a whole lot more code, but more code with PyTorch because PyTorch is really giving you control over a lot of the nuances of how you're training it. So you've got to code things that you just set option flags and other things in TensorFlow. So if you're doing a well-defined problem and you're not inventing a new type of neural network algorithm or abstract, then 
TensorFlow Keras will probably get you quicker from point A to point B. However, if you're going off the rails and trying to research and develop your own thing, TensorFlow Keras gets a bit cumbersome, and then you'll you'll like the extra trouble that you have to go through in, in something like a PyTorch. I do have the instructions for installing this directly onto your machine. If you want to try to install it, I suggest installing it, trying before the first class. I'm perfectly willing to help you after we have the first class with any configuration problems that you might be having with, with it if you tried to install it onto your own computer. If you're watching this from the internet, then post in the description post in the comments to if you're running into a specific issue. I get five to six requests for me to go on Zoom and help people <laughs> install stuff a week. I just sadly do do not have the time to work one-on-one -on -one with people, unless you're my student. That's part of what your tuition gets you. So here is some code basically to, to check your Python installation. You'll want to run this You'll want to see GPU is available if you are expecting the GPU. And then the TensorFlow version that we're currently working with in this course is 2.8. Kara's version is also 2.8. These two should be the same. Thank you for watching this video. And if you want to follow along with this course, please subscribe to my YouTube channel and give the video a like if this was helpful.